Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint realistic feathers in this step-by-step -step tutorial. Now let's jump straight into it. So the first thing that I personally like to do is make sense of the main sets of feathers that I can see in the reference photo. Now my first biggest tip is when you do your transfer or you're sketching your feathers out, don't sketch in every single one. Too many lines early on can make it very confusing. So what I like to do is just sketch in the first few that I notice when I look at that area of the bird. Then once I've done that, I'm going to take either my shadows or my highlights. Now it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but I do like to focus on one or the other at this stage. It's going to make it a lot easier to tackle. And that's all that I'm doing here. Now for me, painting feathers is one of the more challenging things to, to have on the easel because it's one of the things that makes us think, where do I start? Now for me, the one way that I tackle that is you can see that I'm working in different areas. So I started mapping in my darks at the lower end of the body and now I've moved up to the top nearer the neck. I do find that by switching between the top and bottom section and then I'm now starting to fill some lighter shapes in the middle, I'm gradually reducing that big area. So I'm just scaling everything down. One thing that also happens, and this can, it's just part of the process, it depends on how you personally are going to tackle that reference photo. I felt that I wanted to carry on blocking in my lights and my darks. Now on this section of the body, there wasn't anything that was really dark, like the bottom section that I started with. So I didn't want to go in and block the black everywhere. That's one thing that I personally do like to do in my base layer, is I do want to try and get it as accurate in terms of the lights and the darks as I can because I do believe that it makes it far easier to then follow that reference photo with our detailed layers. So although I am using some lighter browns and some yellow ochres here mixed in with some of my browns, all I'm still doing is mapping in my lights and my darks. I'm not trying to overcomplicate it, I'm not focusing on any detail, it's purely the shapes that I can see. Now because at this stage I'm managing to hide more of that background but it's looking accurate to the reference photo in terms of where those main feathers are. I've paid really close attention here not to put one solid colour down for my base layer and then try to freehand my feathers back in over the top. Now that is perfectly fine to do that. There are many cases where I do take that approach. But for me, because I do find feathers particularly challenging, I like to make sure that I've mapped in the bulk of the feathers that attract my attention first. I like to put those in early on because for me, it's just a way that my brain, as I say, processes that reference photo. If I work this way with feathers, I know I spend less time hesitating and I'm more productive. Now, one thing that I want to mention is you can see that my hand here is just pointing at the canvas. I'm explaining things as I'm going because this is available on my Patreon as a slow, in-depth tutorial. It is all uploaded in real time. I haven't cut anything out. There are no bits sped up, no secrets. I show you everything from the base layers all the way to those final details. So if you would like to paint along to this eagle tutorial, you get the reference photo, line art, the layout that I created because I added in the mountain and the sky to create something unique. If you would like to have access to all of that, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. Okay, so my next step, what I wanna do here is I'm just basically making my lights and darks more accurate in terms of their placement. I'm not focusing on mixing the exact colour at this stage, that really isn't important. I can adjust that later on with glazes. But I want to make sure that I've got my lights and my darks in the right place. Here I'm also refining my feather texture. Now the way that I paint feathers is going to vary depending on the bird because an eagle like this that I'm painting now has very different feathers to something like a robin, so I do have to make sure that I'm adjusting my brush strokes accordingly. But because the feathers on the chest and lower part of the body here are much more fluffier looking than the feathers on the wing, which you've got tucked up higher up on the painting, and you can see the photo of my finished painting in the corner, I want to make sure that I'm replicating the difference in feather texture as much as I can. So I'm being very accurate, I'm being precise, and I'm making sure that every brush stroke counts. 
Now that doesn't mean if I make a mistake, I can't fix that. I make mistakes all the time. And again, it's it's why I don't leave anything out in my Patreon tutorials because mistakes happen all the time and it's about knowing how to fix those mistakes, which is important because mistakes happen, it's just knowing how to fix them. So if I do make a brush stroke that's in the wrong place or maybe I just don't like the shape, it's a little bit too distracting, as long as the layer underneath is completely dry, you can lift that mistake up with just a damp brush. But you do have to make sure the layer underneath is completely dry. So this layer that I'm working on, I see this more about tidying up my first base layer. As I say, I'm not focusing on the detail that I can see that's on the very top of the feathers. I do need to leave those to the last layers. Here, it's just a matter of making it more accurate. But because I did take the time to map in the lighter and darker feathers at that base layer, it's far easier to get that reference photo and painting looking similar more early on. Now for me personally, this keeps me more motivated because if I decided to leave this current layer as it is now for the end of the painting session, I would be very happy with that because it's already resembling that reference photo. There is still a lot to do and it looks very different to how it looks when the painting is finished, but this does, it's not quite at that stage where you think, oh, what does that look like? Which if you're blocking it in more with specific um, solid colours, you can end up delaying that process and I do personally personally find that I am far more um, like less motivated to carry on with that piece so this is definitely my preference. So on to the next stage and this is adjusting the colour. Now if you've seen many of my other tutorials here on YouTube you'll know that I put a lot of focus on my glazes and I often get a lot of questions about what are glazes. Now for me there are a couple of different reasons why you would use them but in this case I am using them to adjust my colour getting it a little bit more accurate to that reference photo. Now for me I don't like working in all cases where I leave one glaze till the very end. I do personally like to glaze throughout the layering process and adjust that colour as I go. This is still going to be quite different to the colour of the finished painting but from this stage it's it's close. I'm focusing on the feathers that are closer to the skin and I'm building up from there. I'm always remembering to leave those feathers that are sat on the top until those last layers. Now glazes is one of the ways where you can take out all of the stress from mixing colours early on, trying to get the exact colour that we can see in the reference photo, because this is one of the more common questions that I'm asked. How do I know which colours to select at which layer? But you really don't have to focus on that. As you can see through this layering process, I have purely been mapping in my lights and my darks. That's been my main aim for the first few layers. And it's only now that I'm starting to adjust the colour. But it's still not the 100% accurate colour that I can see in that reference photo. I can do that at the last layer with my final glaze. So before I move on to these detailed layers and where I start to build up more of that feather texture, if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be really, really grateful. And I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm paying a little bit more attention to the next lighter layer. This is going to help to build up more depth in my feathers. What I don't want to be doing, as I've said throughout this tutorial, is jump into my brightest values first. I want to be working on all of those lovely, beautiful mid-tones in between. Okay, so building up more of the realism. I have a video here on YouTube and it is my top tips for painting realistic fur. Now, although this is feathers, there are a couple of things there that can be transferred into feather texture. And one of those is I like to use a range of brushes. When working with acrylics or any paints really, we have the ability to use specific brushes for their desired brush strokes. I don't want to be using the same brush from the base layer all the way up to my final details because you'll end up having a painting that's a little bit more flatter because your brush strokes will all resemble the same sort of stroke. 
So I like to mix not too many, but I'll usually have at least three or four different sorts of shaped brushes. So I will typically use a filbert, I'll use a round, I'll use some liner brushes, and in some cases I will use a rake brush. I haven't used a rake brush here because I personally don't like them for feathers. I do prefer using my liner brush, which is what I've got here, just a smaller version, and I'm using that to paint in each individual feather detail. This does take longer, but in some cases there's no quick way. You do just have to paint each of those details if you want to capture this level of photorealism. So with the layering process that I have shown here throughout these stages, it's now just a rinse and repeat process. I'm going to be building up more of my details as I currently am here and refining my contrast. I'm then going to be working with my glazes and I'm going to repeat this same process until I've built up the right amount of detail and texture that I want in my painting for how I can see it in my reference photo. Now the one thing that you hear me talk about on all tutorials is contrast. The importance of our lights and our darks is what's going to make that painting realistic rather than the exact colour. In the real time tutorial on Patreon I go through this in depth because I did change some of the colours that I dragged into the feathers because I adjusted my background. If you adjust and add a different background, it's always a good idea to pull some of those colours in the subject that you are painting to make sure that both of them look like they were photographed together. The last thing I wanted was to add this mountain scene with that beautiful blue sky and some of those clouds and it looked like the bird was just stuck on like a sticker over the top of that background because the colours clashed too much. I had to make sure that I dragged in some of those cooler colours so it did make that painting more, more balanced, like it was more in harmony with each other. So it's at this stage where I started to build more of the feathers at the top but mid-tone layers are still not the brightest values. I felt that my brush strokes needed to be a little bit longer. So this is where I switched over to a longer liner brush. Now the way to make a liner brush work, it does rely on the technique. Most brushes are very easy to get that technique right, but a liner brush is something that does take a little bit of practice. What I would recommend to do is get a cheap pad of like, watercolour paper and use just a black and white paint, well, just black would be fine, and then just practice using that liner brush on painting long but fine lines. Now in order to do that there are two things that are going to make that brush work. One is the consistency, so you want to make sure that the paint isn't too thick because otherwise it won't be able to leave that brush. And also you want to make sure that you're not applying too much pressure because your brush strokes will look very thick. So with less pressure and the right consistency of paint, you should be able to create a beautiful long but thin line with a liner brush. But it does take a bit of practice, so I would recommend to do that on a spare bit of paper or a spare bit of canvas, whatever you've got, and just do that before you try doing these lines on your painting. But remember, if you do make a mistake, it's very easily fixed. Don't panic, we can either paint over it or remove that completely with a damp brush. Just remember that base layer or the layers underneath, they do have to be completely dry before you try that technique. So I really hope that this video has been useful. As I say, I'd be really grateful if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a real difference. And if you are interested in my slower in-depth tutorials on Patreon or you would like to paint this eagle along with me, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm gonna be uploading another video to YouTube at the end of the week. And as always, thank you so much for watching.